When I first saw the tooth, I actually got goosebumps because you know, it is a carnivore, I didn't care what it was. It was a carnivore tooth and we finally found a carnivore tooth and I fulfilled my duty as a carnivore paleontologist. This was at the end of the day and we were packing up to go home and one of my collaborators, and he actually, no, you guys need to come here. I have found some interesting tooth. I think you will like it. We haven't found a single carnivore tooth that whole day. So, so when he showed me the tooth, I knew immediately that this was a carnivore because it's, since it's a very diagnostic tooth, but I didn't know exactly what it was. I didn't want to believe that it was an otter. <laughs> uh, but after a more careful comparison, and actually you know, with modern technology, we were able to bring out our cell phones and, and Google for these scientific papers and then compare the, the features on the tooth right there with previously published material. So by the time we got to the car, we actually knew that this was, this was most likely an otter and not only an otter, but an otter that was previously known only on the coasts. There were two previous ideas about how this fossil otter traveled from Florida to California. Uh, one proposed a route through the Arctic uh, along the coast of the Western Atlantic to the North Pacific. So the, the second idea uh, was the otter traveled through the Gulf of Mexico, uh, through what's called the Central American Seaway, around the area today known as Panama, over to the Pacific. Now we also have to take into consideration possible movements in the east-west direction uh, through this ecological corridor, so to speak. Uh, the next steps would be for my team and also other teams around the world to look for additional evidence that would either support or refute our proposed idea of having this corridor going from east to west.